good Josh Boy Ross back at it again with another video. So I know you guys have been wanting me to check out uh different content creators, top ten wrestling matches of the year. But I didn't want to do that. I felt like if I was going to do a top ten matches of the year, I would want to create my own list. So I started thinking of trying to do a top ten match, top ten favorite matches of this year. But then I was like, you know what? I don't even want to do a top ten. I actually want to do a top five. It, top ten for me was gonna be a little bit difficult, uh, only for the simple fact that there were some fantastic matches this year, and I, I, I didn't really want. To, I didn't feel like just really racking my brain over it. So I was like, you know what? Let me do a top five list. Um, and I want to go with that now. I will make a disclaimer. I haven't been watching too many too many NXT I'm not NXT. Well, I haven't been watching NXT matches like that, but too many AEW matches I have started watching more as uh, the year has progressed, but earlier in the year I wasn't watching as many so I will have to give a disclaimer about that So if you don't see your favorite AEW match on here, it's probably because I didn't see it. So and the list is incredibly short sticking to my top five that's just what i want to do so i'm going to do the top five matches that i enjoyed the most of this year man and uh y'all are going to be surprised by my number one i i'm willing to bet y'all won't probably guess my number one uh, at this point in the video so let's start it off here my number five match number five match goes to walter versus dragon off two take over 36 man i don't even know what to say other than i watched this match live i was live streaming this i watched it and it was fantastic it was it was just out of this world great that match literally stole the entire show there was nothing that Karrion cross and samoa joe could have done for the main event in that match to beat what we just saw what just happened their first match they had was hard-hitting fantastic i didn't even see it i soon saw clips of it but it was from the clips i saw it was just fantastic this one even took it to a whole new level and the one thing i like about nxt especially nxt uk you don't even have to follow it week by week i didn't follow i don't really watch nxt uk but when I'm watching the match, it's like I didn't miss anything. They told an incredible story. Dragunov trying to overcome the odds. This champion has been a champion for over 700 days. And they're building it as him just really giving it his all until he finally does it. He beats him. And it's just like a holy shit moment made him a star he was already a star but it made him even a bigger star i just wish we could have seen that in like an arena that the crowd would have lost it bro this this match is easily to me in my opinion one of the great one of the last great nxt matches i know there's been some some cool ones and some great ones probably in nxt 2.0 but that is my definitive nxt type match and it was fantastic if you haven't seen it go watch it if, it, if you want that nxt old school and like that old school vibe of nxt giving you classic matches at takeover go watch this match the, the, it was great man I, I i can't say anything else other than i enjoyed this match from top to finish and um I, I really wish that NXT still had that type of vibe of just fantastic wrestling because that was great. That that was easily, easily one of my favorite matches of this year. So that's my number five. My number four, I'm going to have to give it to, uh, I have a list here right here so I don't forget if you see I'm looking down. Uh, my number four is not to go to Roman versus Cesaro. Backlash of this year, man. That match was really, really, really good. I can't even, I can't even process how good that match was. I expected it to be okay. I expected it to be decent. I didn't expect it to be that damn good. They made Cesaro look like a million fucking bucks. 
I mean, they they actually started to make you believe, holy shit, he can actually do it. It's easily one of my favorite Cesaro matches of his career. That match was so good. And this is when Roman Reigns was on a roll of giving nothing but eight and up, eight star, you know, like eight out of ten matches and up. He was on a roll. It didn't matter who he was facing. The matches were fantastic. And this just took it to the to the pinnacle for me personally because I love me some Cesaro, man. I, I just wish he would get the proper push and maintain that proper push. But WWE doesn't really see him as a main event guy. They built off that story like you're not really on my level. And he proved he is on Roman's level and some. They really had you believing he could really get the job done. Of course, you know, he was really feuding with Seth Rollins at the time. So he gets into the mix. And it just sucks that he didn't really get a chance to continue that feud with Roman. They went straight back into the Seth Rollins feud. And he hadn't really seen the main event scene since then. But that match single-handedly definitely saved Backlash. And I was all for it. I was all for it. So if you haven't seen that match, go check it out. It was, it's, it's worth a watch. Cesaro, he he proved what we already know, what what the real fans know that Cesaro is a main event guy and he deserves to get that uh, uh that main event push, man. So yeah, that was fantastic. So my number three match, we're going to AEW. I gotta give it to Brian Danielson and Adam Hangman Page for AEW World Heavyweight Championship. I had to give it to them. I know this match just came out like last week. I had to give it to them, man. Ah, the reason why I put him at number three, that match at number three, is the simple fact of Brian Danielson's character. Now, some could say why you didn't put uh, Kenny Omega in Brian Danielson. The reason why I didn't do that because Brian Danielson was the overwhelming just baby face. Strong baby face. Here... For the first time since I've ever like seen him outside of him doing his heel run in WWE, for the first time, I get to really see him just really play up that heel persona, but he's not truly a heel because he didn't cheat within that entire match. He didn't cheat at all. He was flipping off the crowd. He was talking shit. I loved it, bro. It was something refreshing. We saw the, the PG heel and Daniel Bryan about the earth, and, and that was cool. But this was the American Dragon. I've never seen this version of his character. He was, it's not too many times in, in wrestling, you actually get a tweener. He wasn't cheating, but he knew he wasn't the fan's favorite. So he's flipping off the fans. He doesn't really care. And I love it. He was a tweener. And it was great. That's what sold this match in the simple fact that he came out there. He wasn't even the underdog. If you want to be honest, they booked Adam Hangman Page, the champ, as the underdog. And that's what made it so refreshing. They booked the champ as the underdog here because Brian Danielson is out here killing people in the matches leading up to it. And in this match, he was literally out there giving Brian uh giving Adam uh Adam Page he was he was giving him some tough competition it was it was one of those things where it's like yo he's beating his ass you know what I'm saying Adam had some offense but really it was it was the Brian Danielson show the American Dragon show he was kicking his ass bro it was fantastic I enjoyed that match looking forward to their rematch this was great this is why it's in my it's I knew if if I did do a top 10 this is going to be in my top five easily. This is number three for me. Fantastic match. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It is worth your time. 60 minutes of just intensity. Brian Danielson showing why he's one of the best wrestlers of this generation. So, yeah, I, I, I had to put that in the mix because uh, what we what we witnessed was it was just truly, truly phenomenal, man. So. For my number two, I'm going to put Roman versus Edge versus Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania this past year, man. I, I got to 
I got to put at WrestleMania 37 this past year. I have to put that in the list because it was the main event and it was fantastic. It was, I don't even know what to say. It was my favorite match of WrestleMania. It was so goddamn good. It was so damn good. The crowd was there, finally. Roman's at the pinnacle. You love you some Edge. You love you some Daniel Bryan. Oh my, match was great. Match was great. And the outcome was great. The fact that my man, Roman, not only beat him, he stacked them, both of them, and pinned both of them at the same time, showing his dominance. Oh, my God. It was so good. It was so good, bro. I, I don't even know what else to say other than that match was one of the best matches WWE has put on for quite some time, in a, especially for WrestleMania. It was, I loved it. I loved that match. That's when we knew, oh, he, they've really solidified him as the guy. It wasn't, oh, one person got pinned so the other person didn't look weak. No, he pinned both of them. The spots was amazing. The edge using the, the chair, the chair, uh, um, one of the legs to put him in a, in, in a submission while Daniel Bryan has like the yes lock on him. At the same time, they both have the submissions Locks on Roman Reigns and Roman, there's nothing he can do, bro. There was nothing he could do. He was just stuck. I was like, oh, that was a fantastic, beautiful spot. Viewable moment in the match. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Just go watch it. WWE, they they hit a home run with that one. And I loved it. Loved the ending. Loved everything about that match. Loved the build up to it. Fantastic. Now. I said number one is going to surprise y'all. I'm pretty sure some of y'all would have thought that would have been my number one. But no, that is not my number one. My number one match that I I really, really, really love this year. One of my favorite matches. My favorite match of this year is going to have to go to Edge versus Seth Rollins. Hell in a Cell at Crown Jewel. I know. Y'all going to be like, what? And I'm I'm sorry. That is my favorite match of this year. That is my favorite match. And I'm gonna I'm gonna break this down to you why it's my favorite match. When was the last time we had a hell in a cell that a hell in a cell match that was outside of the pay-per-view itself? When was the last time we had a hell in a cell match that made sense to be had? A feud ending match. Granted, usually those matches are like maybe four or five matches in sometimes. But this was the third match, the grab match, in a feud ending match. When was the last time we had that? We haven't in quite some time. They usually always shove the hell in the cell match down our throats at the pay-per-view. It's quite annoying, quite cringe. I do hate it. But for them to do this at a show... And, bro, I don't even know what to say other than they started off the show with it. And it was, it was fantastic. The, everything about this match was fantastic. The few leading up to this, Seth going to Edge's career, making it very personal, trying to end his career. The few behind it, the intensity behind it, just goes all the way back to when Edge came back and he was threatened by Seth Rollins to end, you know, to hurt him. Some more by the when he was with the authority. This has this has some history, some weight behind it. And it was, I don't even know what to say. Oh my god, it was so good, bro. It was so damn good, dog. I I'm 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 reliving it now as I'm explaining it to you guys. Why right? is my number one for the simple fact that they did it right. They did hell in a cell justice. It made sense for us to see that match. And it's easy. I'm going to be honest with you. It's the better match. Out of the main event between Roman versus Brock, which was fantastic. That, that was the better match for me. That was in, in what made it match of the year for me personally, outside of just the circumstances, is the simple fact that the way they built this up, it the way the story came together, the passion between both wrestlers. I I was I was all I was sold. I was all sold on it. 
the fact that Edge came back and and was producing fantastic promo segments and matches, some of the, the best work he's done in his t- entire career. I loved it, bro. I loved it, man. Ah, oh, man. If you watched this match live with us, you would have saw how lit we was before the main event. This was great. This was great, and I recommend anybody. If you are a fan of the old school Hell in the Cells, it wasn't too much blood, which is fine. I'm okay with that. But if you're a fan of Hell in the Cells that makes sense outside of the pay-per-view itself, go watch this, man. Go watch this. And I think it works because... I mean, you've seen Edge at his, you know, at his peak. So to see him doing this again, it just, it it, it hit me in the feels because it's like, dog, he is still putting on fantastic matches like this with younger talent. Fantastic. Love the outcome. Love the finish. This is great, bro. This this was great. This is easily my favorite match of of 2021 man so comment down below let me know what will be in your guys top five for this year let me know the matches let me know why they would be in your top five and uh i would love to get that conversation going down in the comment section below i appreciate all love and support road to 70k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace